And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Very happy to welcome Nikki Fleming. We're going to be talking all about safety. Good morning, Nikki. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about uh, who you are with and why you're here this morning. Yes, I'm with the Consumer Product Safety Commission. We are a federal regulatory agency responsible for keeping consumers safe in and around the home uh, from a variety of consumer products, thousands of consumer products. Uh, in addition, uh, we uh, today have announced our um, latest drowning information through our Pull Safely campaign, which is a public education campaign, um, again, aimed at uh, getting water safety tips and safety information out to consumers to educate and motivate them to follow basic water safety steps to prevent these drownings. Are we talking mostly about pools in our backyards or public pools or both? Exactly. So the the majority of the injuries, uh, fatal drownings, actually occur in residential settings. And we know, um, again, the latest report shows a steady rise in fatal child drownings. Um, on average, 379 reported pool or spa-related fatal mm. drownings per year for 2014-15 through 2017 involved children younger than, uh, than 15 years of age. Oh, it's just so tragic. Um, something that's supposed to be such a fun family time together it can just end just devastatingly. We know about the fences. We know to keep them locked when we're not in use. What else do we need to know? And do we see any trends of why it seems to be on the rise? Well, in particular, we're, we're concerned about the younger children. Mm-hmm. Uh, 75% of child drownings between 2015 and 2017 are to children younger than the age of five. So we know young kids are curious, toddlers, um, interested and attracted to water. Um, so they could, and in addition, um, in particular now with many families, Uh, being impacted by the COVID restrictions. They're spending a lot more time at home. Parents can be distracted with competing priorities. So again, it's super important to implement multiple layers of protection Mm -hmm. to protect you and your family. You mentioned COVID. So let's talk about what is special this summer that we haven't had to do before. Again, uh, families may have competing uh, priorities at home, um, not only having to become teachers and educate their children, as well as working simultaneously. So again, competing priorities. And we know that supervision is key and critical when it comes to preventing drownings. Um, Children, again, are getting access to the pool uh, when the parents are unaware. In fact, um, of those children under the age of five, about 56% were attributed to a gap in adult supervision. So if you have those layers of protection in place, um, that can give the parents key extra minutes because it only takes minutes uh, to drown. Drownings are quick and quiet. Um, They're not like in the movies with the flailing of the arms. So again, parents need to know uh, the whereabouts of their children at all times in and around water. And again, you can do that by implementing multiple layers of protection. We've all had that terrifying moment where it's, oh, I thought you were watching them. No, I thought you were watching them. And are you saying that's kind of how this happens? Fortunately, most of the time, everything's okay, but sometimes it's not. That can definitely be uh, one of the situations how it can occur. Um, so what you can do is, in addition to, we talked about the four-sided, four, four-sided four-foot fence uh, surrounding the pool with the self-closing and self-latching gate. So you want that gate to lock each and every time behind you. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you can also add a door alarm if your home represents one side of the pool. You want to make sure you have a door alarm so you know each and every time anyone uh, exits the home, perhaps on their way to the pool. Um, Again, you can even install a fence alarm and even a pool alarm that will alert you if water is broken, if Mm -hmm. um, a child actually enters the water. What other layers might there be that we can install? Uh, In addition, so those are some of the ones you can actually install. And then there's the ones that we as parents, we want to learn how to swim, and we also want to teach our kids how to swim. Yes, It's super important and critical. Again, it's another layer of protection. Um, Also, in the event of an emergency, learning CPR for both adults and children can be critical. So that's another thing that parents can do. How soon is too soon to begin swimming lessons? I would recommend folks talk with their pediatricians on that. 
Um, I know the American Academy of Pediatrics may have some guidelines for that, but definitely check with your pediatrician. But yeah, the sooner the better. And and not only uh, lessons in the water, but what we call dry land lessons or lessons at home. And we do have resources at poolsafely.gov for children as well as adults, um, both educational and fun. Because I know parents, again, are looking for activities for their kids. So why not have water safety messages and tips through games and puzzles and other activities that we have available. So can you give us some, because I love the idea of keeping it fun. We don't want to make them scared of the water. They shouldn't be afraid to go into the water, but they need to have a healthy respect for it and know how to swim. Um, What are some of the games that you do? Right. So the, we have um, puzzles and crossword puzzles, um, and also some, there are videos available. We even have an app um, at Pool Safely. Um, so you can even download the app, which has games for children as mm. well. These kids are, are very savvy <laughs> with the electronics. So again, why not uh, utilize um, electronics um, for educational learning, but at the same time making it, like we said, fun. We don't want to scare the children, but we do want the parents to be um, keenly aware mm-hmm. whenever they're in and around water. And I know we've talked a lot about traditional style pools, but parents are even looking for, for ways to keep cool this summer. Maybe they're thinking about a portable pool. It's easy to purchase. Um, and get delivered to your home, or you can even go purchase one. So again, with the portable pools, you want to take the same key steps um, of supervision at all times. When you're finished using the portable pool, you want to empty it, cover it, and put it away immediately after every use. Are you talking about inflatable wading pools? They can be dangerous as well. It's true, yes. Even it only takes a few inches for a child to drown. Oh. So even the portable pools, the small ones that we get for our really young children, and again, we're looking at those ages that we're most concerned about and most vulnerable, which are those young children under the age of five. Um, again, we know they naturally are attracted to the water mm-hmm. and, and looking, and again, looking for things to do uh, again during this time of, of being restricted with COVID. So empty it out, fold it up, put it away between each use. Correct. Every each and every time. That also keeps the mosquitoes from gathering too, doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot of good reasons to put that away. Between, do you have any flotation devices that children can wear that you recommend? We only recommend the uh, ones that are certified by U.S. Coast Guard. So those are traditional life jackets. Um, so you're looking for the certification. The ones that you can purchase at the store that may be inflatable and other things that can give you a false sense of security. Mm. So, again, if supervision is key. If you choose to use those um, devices, but they don't take the place of a real flotation device, a certified uh, U.S. Coast Guard um, life jacket. So don't put the water wings on and then go get yourself a snack. Correct. You want no distractions. Exactly. <laughs> right. We want that. And, and we didn't talk about it, but designating a water watcher with no distractions. And that means, yeah, no reading, no texting, no use, mm-hmm. use of the smartphone. But your sole job is to actually keep an eye on the children at all times. Um, and you can always pass that responsibility on. We recommend doing it in smaller increments, 15 or 20 minutes at a time, so that another adult can take your place. Um, Pool Safely even has a free lanyard that goes around your neck that you can order at poolsafely.gov. And again, that just reminds everyone that this person is on duty. They are supervising the kids, and that's where their full attention is. What a great idea to have an actual designated lifeguard on duty at all times, even in your backyard pool. I know with... um, public pools or beaches and so forth, lifeguards go through some type of training. Should the adults themselves have some kind of training before they take on that responsibility of watching, you know, all the kids and the cousins and so forth? It's a great idea. Learning uh, and knowing how to perform CPR on children and adults is something we all should do. Um, And many communities do offer online CPR training. So at minimum, that would be great if everyone could do that, especially, again, the parents with the young children. Yes, I know my daughter is a certified, uh, my teenager is a certified lifeguard. So there's a lot more training involved with that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, every minute, again, um, counts and CPR can allow you to uh, perform those that that um, before the um, actual uh, professionals arrive. Yes. Why 15 to 20 minutes at a time? What's special about that amount of time? 
Uh, no, just to, just to give the the uh, adult who is the wa- the designated water watcher um, a break mm-hmm. um, in case they do need to you know go use the restroom or, or there could be a lot of reasons why they may need to go into the home and and leave the kids. You just want to never leave the kids unattended, and again, you can put your own time limits on it. Um, you know, again, as long as someone is always um, designated as a water watcher, and like you said, you don't want one person to think, oh no, I thought you were. You know, you were watching the kids, and I thought, you know, I was watching the kids. So you don't want that to happen because, unfortunately, yes, we have had incidents where that has occurred. Yes. Um, Okay. And then the fence. Let's go back again. You said specific dimensions for the fence and particular locks. Let's remind everyone what that needs to be. Sure. Um, Again, a minimum of a four-foot fence um, and also a self-latching, self-closing gate. So that means it springs back and closes automatically behind you, and that's what Mm -hmm. you're looking for. Um, Some of the other styles, perhaps, you know, someone, again, we have had uh, instances where the barriers were there. However, they were um, open or broken, and the child was still able to have access to the pool. Mm. So something like a self-closing, self-latching gate, that can make all the difference because it automatically closes behind you. What about locking? I know uh, with our family, Grandma always had a padlock around the pool fence. And so <laughs> is there something good about keeping it locked up between use as well? Uh, yeah, any extra layers of protection. And again, you're mm-hmm. not only thinking about your own family. Uh, in these right. instances, 71% represented uh, residential pools, and they weren't only in your own home, but your neighbor's home, your community. So again, it's about all of us working together to keep these children safe, to keep all of our children safe. Um, so yes, anything that can, and again, multiple layers of protection are always helpful. So you bring up is extra tall. You bring up such a good point as far as what do you do about neighbors who are interested in your pool? Is there some kind of a conversation that families should have with their children if anybody in the neighborhood has a pool um, to go over the rules with them? I'm I was thinking of just your own family's pool, but what about the neighbor children who obviously are going to want to come over and swim as well? What do parents say to them? Is there a conversation that's not scary, again, but just um, giving good information to their children to help protect them? Yeah, again, some of it really is common sense and and having that conversation with each other that as long as uh, someone is supervising the kids and we know that it's a critical part, again, to drowning. So if the kids do get into trouble, someone can respond immediately. Um, So having that conversation with your neighbors, especially, yes, because usually, yes, I'm I'm, I'm on a block where there's like one pool and it's the most popular home (laughs) with all the children. Um, So everyone knows that. So I think it's really important for not only the pool owner, but yeah. Yes, um, even the, the families that may be interested in sending their children over there having a conversation about what protections are put in place. Um, you know, and it, and it could be that you're, you're just visiting a neighbor's house, not even necessarily to swim. Um, but again, if the kids can get access to the yeah. pool, making sure that those protections are in place. And then we add COVID to on top of all of this, that icing on the cake this summer. So if you are having neighbors over, what do we need to remember to follow is ways of, do you swim with a mask? Do you have social distancing? Does the virus travel through water? What, what do we know and what do we need? I'm just totally opening up there to sound as uninformed as I am as far as how to handle that this summer since it's something we've never had to handle before. Yes, no, it's a good point. And we are aware um, that our other federal agency, the CDC, has put out information and guidelines about how to keep safe from COVID during this time. So everyone should go to cdc.gov and check that information out. And I know, yeah, things are changing in everyone's neighborhood. Mm. Um, you know, each one has a different um way of opening or reopening uh, pools and other locations. Some of them may be at a certain percentage, a smaller number. But again, even in a public pool, we always recommend, again, that you supervise your kid, even when there's a lifeguard on duty. A lot of times they're responsible for multiple kids and multiple families that are enjoying the pool at the same time. So again, we would recommend you are always keeping an eye at all times, not only on your kid, but on any kids that that are in the water 
so you can alert um, an emergency personnel yes. right away. Yes, there's so many little heads bobbing around out there. Uh, we are speaking with Nikki Fleming, talking about some consumer safety and particularly pool safety right now. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to Our Community. Welcome back to Our Community. Susie Thomas with you, visiting with Nikki Fleming, talking all about pool safety. Uh, you had mentioned how important swimming lessons. I mean, that is basic. Swimming lessons if you're going to be using a pool. But um, what kinds I remember swimming lessons being a lot of sitting in just sitting there waiting your turn to do the floating on the back are there certain programs that you recommend are there certain ways that are better to learn to swim than other ways uh, you know what peer pressure you, seemed to be the big one once the cousins right. knew how to swim our kids learned how to swim no, it's it's another vital skill that we should all have. And again, it's another, another preventative measure we can all take is to make sure not only that our kids can swim, that we as adults can swim yes. um, in case we do have to take action again in, in the event of an emergency and have to get involved with our own kids. Um, so, and that's an important point, not only, you know, children learning how to swim, but adults too. Um, also, having that protection, you know, and having that access uh, to swim lessons can, can vary again in your community. I would encourage you to check with your community centers. But there's lots of um, national organizations that also offer lessons again. And I think some of them are getting creative with online training, mm -hmm. um, again, due to COVID um, and due to, to pools closing. So definitely check with your own community. Sometimes there's even um, classes that are free or even a priced, uh, reduced price um, as well. So don't let that be a barrier and don't let that stop you from, from um, definitely learning how to swim. So, so important. And what really stuck with me through my learning, my training, my life-saving training was throw, row, go. Um, is that still a thing? <laughs> if you are in the, if you're in the position where you need to see and you see someone in trouble, you hear too many times where that person is so frantic they pull down and then there's a double drowning. What what should you do? Correct. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. Definitely. And, and one thing um, I'm noticing with your mentioning that is that you have that uh, device available, whether it be the long poles that mm. I've seen at my own um, community pool or the life rings. Um, so having these safety devices um, available. So in the case of an emergency, again, I know in our in our numbers, uh, we're in particularly concerned with the very, very young children, the, the children under the age of five. And, and our report actually goes up to children under the age of 15 with our average of 379 um, drowning reports. And we know these drownings are preventable. So again, mm. by implementing all of these steps, um, giving your uh, child that extra chance by, by having lessons, um, implementing water safety, um, installing and implementing water safety uh, items such as door alarms and pool alarms and, and self latching self-closing gates are really important. My mind is still blown about you mentioning that it only takes a couple of inches because I think most of us feel that as long as everybody is staying in the shallow end and, you know, playing Marco Polo or whatever over in the shallow end and you've got some kind of a rope hooking on before you get to the deeper end of the pool, that everybody's okay. You're saying we need to be a lot more on the ball than that. Yes. Definitely a water safety vigilance is not only exterior on the outside of your home. There's actually lots of drowning dangers even inside the home that the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission, we also work on those such as a bathtub, a toilet, oh a bucket even. Uh, we've had kids, young, young kids topple over head first into a, a bucket that was left with a few inches of water and have drowned that way. So again, these tips are are good tips regardless of where you are if you're around the water and it can be open bodies of water um, as well as um, swimming pools and then even items in your home. Thank goodness there are people like you who are able to walk into any room and automatically pick out here's a danger here's a danger a lot of us don't think that way is there some kind of a special thing that you needed to go through to be able to think that way and recognize that a little bit of water in a bucket could be a hazard. 
Yes, it, we consider ourselves a data-driven agency, and we do gather all of this uh, data, and that's one of the ways that we are so aware. Um, uh, you know, working for the Consumer Product Safety Commission, I've also worked on a lot of children's and baby uh, safety items, and I know that they are one of the most vulnerable of our population, mm. the youngest, because they don't have any fear, and they again, they are attracted to water, um, and they will, you know, kind of kind of walk right in or try to retrieve a toy. That's why t- we tell you never to leave any toys in the pool after you're done as well. Mm. Um, remove um, those immediately so the kids don't try to go out and retrieve them. It's important to know your children too, right? Because some of us have children who there's no way they're getting in a pool and unless an adult is there with them, they automatically have that in them. That little They edit themselves before they go diving in. And then we also have children who just know someone's going to catch them if they just run and jump into the air. They're just sure somebody will be there. And I had one of each of those kinds of kids. (laughs) So how important to know your own child, yes? Yes, that's great advice. No, know, knowing your own child definitely can make all the difference. Um, yeah, I've had uh, I have three children, and, and they're all different. Like you said, <laughs> um, yeah, there's the ones who are more cautious and, mm-hmm. and not necessarily going to just jump in. But then there's the ones who have, you know throw caution to the wind yes. and will go towards danger. So we knew to be extra aware as parents or divide ourselves up, you know, to make sure one of us always had an eye on one of the kids, oh. um, especially when we're out and about. Um, and like I said, you get you're with friends, you're chatting, you have your cell phone, unfortunately, most of us carry it at all times. Um, But even in a pool setting, you don't want to be reading a book, you don't want to be looking at your smartphone or tablet, or any other distractions, you really, again, want to designate yourself as the person who's keeping an eye on the kids. And be watching the kids. Plus, they're constantly yelling at you, hey, mom, Look, watch, you know, you're always getting that. So um, just keep an eye on them. Um, Tell me a little more about the Consumer Product Safety Commission, Um, what you all do. It seems like you have an awful lot of things you would be responsible for. We are responsible for a lot. So it can be anything from your electronics in your home, so all your appliances in your home, uh, even the furniture in your home. So just about everything in the home and then toys and we even do outdoor um equipment like lawn equipment as well. Um, We do just about everything with the exception of food and drugs, which is our friends over at FDA. Um, But just about everything else is our jurisdiction. So we do have a wide range of topics. We encourage you to go to cpsc.gov. I think what we're most well known for is our product recalls. Um, A lot of times consumers don't hear about recalls. On average, we recall about 300 products a year in all these categories. Um, so, again, it's really important to just be aware, um, and you can yes. sign up to get direct notification, which is one of the best ways to do it, um, so that you can um, know when, when a recall happens, and then take advantage of the remedy. The good news is there's usually a remedy uh, negotiated with our agency, which is either a repair, a replacement, or a refund. So, one of those three options for consumers to take advantage of. Yeah, we want to keep everyone safe. I want to remind everybody about those two websites to check out, uh, poolsafety.gov and cpsc.gov. Check out both of those. Uh, Nikki, summertime seems to be, you know, we all wait for it. You're talking to somebody in Ohio. We long for it. We just can't wait until it rolls around, and it's all too short. But it is a little bit more dangerous. Are there some other things that summer brings along with it that we need to be a little bit aware of in addition to the pool? Yes, and I just want to uh, correct you on the name Pool Save Lee with a L Y at the Ooh, end. Oh, good. Lee dot gov. Thank you for for more resources from the agency on pools. Definitely go there. But yes, um, it is summertime, so even um, sports we we collect injuries on sports um, and other outdoor activities, uh, gardening, um, and all the equipment that goes along with that. Again, I was saying the lawn. Um, you know, we're all we're all interested in taking care of our lawns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, check for recalls on some of those lawn mowers and some of those um, weed whacker style <laughs> yes. um, pieces of, of, of um, equipment as well. So again, we don't want to uh, see, but we do collect hospital emergency room injuries as well on all of these products. Um, we have something called the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System, where we can provide these statistics um, and see, you know, where problems are happening and then how we can get messaging out to consumers. So for, yes, yeah, so again, for more information on all of these topics, again, go to cpsc.gov. We have put together some uh, COVID-related checklists 
and I would encourage everyone to go to our website and see them. Right. Again, we knew consumers would be spending a lot of time at home. And again, we know we have you have the young children. We didn't talk about um, poisonings, for instance, um, with families, again, multi-generational, maybe at home. Maybe there's lots of medicines around. We are the agency responsible for the Child Resistant Packaging Act. Um, so those child resistant packages that are required on the medicines that comes out of under our jurisdiction. Um, and again, making sure those things are kept up and out of reach along with even cleaning products. I think we've all um, looked for and used uh, all these different chemicals to try to clean and sanitize our homes. More than ever. In the environment, more than ever. <laughs> so we, we want to keep them out of the reach of young children who may mistake them for drink or, or mm. something else. So again, mm. keeping them, we do a lot on uh, child poisonings as well. So all those things locked up as well and out of reach. Correct. Oh my, okay. Uh, so yes. much to think about. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, I must know what's dangerous about gardening. It seems like the well, one, my little one respite where, okay, I can do this and nothing bad can happen to me. It's usually, again, being the Consumer Product Safety Commission, it's usually, it could mm-hmm. be the equipment, it perhaps can be sharp, mm-hmm. and maybe you've injured yourself in some way. Again, it could be the, um, the either battery operated or um, even you know gas powered, um, different things that we use to clear out and clean up and plant you know things. So it's it's a large variety of different products. So just again, the interaction between the consumer and that product and getting um, you know if you get a serious injury like a serious laceration, um, but even minor injuries we're we're interested in again preventing. Um, so yeah, just be safe, everyone out there. Yes, absolutely. Just swinging real quick, just to finish up, back to the pool since you mentioned chemicals. Um, keeping it clean and so forth, sometimes there's some chemical. Are there some we should not use, or is that something else where we check out poolsafely.gov? Actually, something like that, you would actually call your pool service provider. Okay. And they can give you that information directly. And, and I know, yes, um, people that have a pool uh, talk about having uh, maintenance uh, during the year and throughout and uh, actually preparing themselves for summer to, to reopen their pools in various parts of the country. So yeah, now would be the time to definitely look into that. In addition, one regulation that the Consumer Product Safety Commission does have for pools are drains. Um, kids should always be kept away and should be taught to be kept away from pool drains, pipes and other openings to avoid entrapments. Mm. We have the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act and that law uh, requires um, a pool cover that prevents um, entrapment, which is, again, a serious danger that we want to avoid. So we want to check pools to make sure you have the, the, um, the one that meets the federal regulation. And the way to do that is to call your service pool uh, provider. And also just the behavior around the pool. No horsing around, no uh, diving in the shallow end. Uh, you don't want to bump your head. Um, just all those kinds of things we need, we need to learn and be aware of. Summer's such a fun time, but we need to be smart. Yes? No, it's true. Um, exactly. Putting rules in place prior to go. I know all the kids are um, excited to go and mm-hmm. excited to be there. And then parents are happy to cool off as well. Um, so, again, um, maybe at the beginning, making it clear, you know, where the dangers lie, um, such as avoiding all pool drains and pipes and any kind of openings, um, you know, deciding what part of the pool uh, it, it makes the most sense for your child. Um, should they be staying in the, the, I know we have a child's pool at our community pool for the real young kids, mm-hmm. and then we have a shallow end blocked off, of course, between the, the larger where kids who are actually doing laps and a little bit more um, sophisticated with their swimming. So understanding yeah, and making that understanding before you even set foot in the pool would be a great idea. It's been a pleasure speaking with Nikki Fleming from the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Go to poolsafely.gov or cpsc.gov for more. Nikki Fleming, thanks so much for joining us in our community today. Thank you.